Benvenuti, welcome to our Next Steps presentation for admitted students into Loyola University Chicago's Rome Start program. My name is Ola Vistotsky. I am one of the Assistant Directors of Admission and Recruitment for our John Felice Rome Center, and I'm joined today by my colleague, David Schmidt. Hello, uh, my name is David Schmidt. Thank you, Ola, for that rousing introduction. Um, and I want to join Ola in welcoming you all to the Rome Start program. It's a fantastic way to get started uh, at Loyola University Chicago at our uh, campus in Rome. There we go. So um, just some dates to start with. So uh, for those of you planning your upcoming year in Rome, these are going to be helpful. I'll add to that. Uh, if you just do a web search for JFRC academic calendar, you can find all of these dates online. They have been posted on the Loyola website. So uh, for your information, though, students are expected to move in to the John Felice Rome Center for the Rome Start 2021-2022 school year on Sunday, August 29th. Your first day of orientation is the next day. Orientation will last for a few days before you'll be joined by other Loyola students who are studying abroad, perhaps for the semester or for the entire school year on usually Wednesday of that first week. Classes will then begin the following Monday on September 6th. And then you can see here that you'll have a fall break, a Thanksgiving break, and then the semester will end in mid-December. Rome Start students are welcome to stay on campus over the holidays if they'd like. In years past, some students do stay on campus. In some cases, family or friends will join them for the holidays in Rome, although you're also certainly welcome to return back to wherever you may live and spend the holidays at home or elsewhere. Our spring semester will begin then in mid-January 2022. There will be a semester break in March, and then the school year will conclude in Rome in the early May of 2022. So just to give you a sense of roughly when the school year will go, and again, I'd encourage you to check our academic calendar online so you can get a better sense of when, uh, when to be expected on campus. Before you go, if you are not a European Union student, um, then you will need to get a visa. This will be a study visa that will allow you to stay in the country for the year or for the school year uh, that you'll spend studying abroad with the John Felicia Rome Center. So once you've made your deposit, and that's a $500 deposit to Loyola University Chicago, that will secure your spot in our Rome Start class, and then we will be able to start helping you uh, with the visa process. Now keep in mind, in the event our Rome Start program has to be adapted or changed and students are uh, invited to come to Chicago instead of Rome due to our response to the coronavirus or to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that $500 deposit will apply for Chicago just like it does for Rome. So you are securing your spot in the freshman class regardless of whether uh, that uh, is hopefully in Rome or in Chicago. So. You'll need your passport, a valid U.S. passport, valid for at least six months after the end of the school year, which would be November of 2022. Um, and we will use that passport to uh, provide you with the visa documentation that you need to apply for a visa on your own. You can do that at a consulate near you. Uh, we certainly have a consulate here in Chicago that we work with very regularly, but depending on where you live in the country, we can help you to find the consulate or the consular official who's best suited to help you with the visa process. Now, students are encouraged to make that appointment as early as possible. However, it must be done within three months of your departure for the European Union. So if you are heading over to Rome for that uh, August 29th start, then you don't want to make that appointment any earlier than the end of May, May 29th to be exact. Uh, so make the appointment as soon as you can, uh, but make sure it's not before three months before your departure date for the European Union. We are standing by, uh, Loyola University staff and faculty, both here in Chicago and in Rome, to assist you with the visa process. We'll provide the documentation that you need, we'll walk you through the application process, and we'll make sure that you have all the documents in order so that when you do have that visa appointment sometime in June, July, or August, you'll have all the paperwork you need for hopefully a very smooth process. Any information that we need, we will ask you for via email, generally to your LUC email address, um, and it will also be posted to your portal. Uh, your undergraduate admission portal. So uh, just to be very clear here too, um, in regards to our response to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, in the event we do have to change Rome Start significantly uh, or in such a way that Rome Start cannot run as we intend for it to run this fall, we will work with every student for a suitable alternative. So if that means uh, enrolling in Chicago classes here um, on our home campus here in Chicago, or uh, if students would like to explore other alternative uh, approaches to the fall semester, then we will be in touch and we will work with each student individually for the best possible solution. Switching gears to academics, 
So uh, one thing you can anticipate uh, by being a Rome Start student, uh, you are still a Loyola student. You are still a part of the Loyola community. And that also um, goes along with the academics. So the academics at the um, in the Rome Start program do follow the core curriculum, just like in Chicago. If you remember, the core curriculum will uh, include those foundational courses that all Loyola students take throughout their academic career um, at Loyola. So um, some unique components, I do believe, that are particularly to the Rome Center, especially with Rome Start students, the fact that you can take these types of classes as a freshman are our on-site classes. So on-site classes are, um, for example, if you are studying theology or if you're taking an art history core class, then instead of studying what you, uh, instead of studying the material using a textbook or PowerPoint presentation, your professor will say, all right, next week we are meeting in front of the Vatican uh, in St. Peter's Square, and we will then go to the Vatican Museums and see the Sistine Chapel in person versus on a PowerPoint in a classroom on campus. Not only is this a great way to get to really experience the material you're learning, um, but it's a great way to learn how to navigate the city along with your classmates and your professors, um, many of which are experts in their field, they're locals, so they're either Italian or Roman born, or they're foreigners who have chosen to call Rome their home, um, so they're expats, ex expatriates. Um, so they're a great resource in terms of the study material, but also great resources in terms of actually learning the city and learning how to make Rome more like home for you. In addition to the on-site classes, there are study trips, which I do think are really the crown jewel of the JFRC in terms of what they can offer students. So um, like David said, with um, the current situation that we find ourselves with the pandemic, we're not exactly sure what these uh, will look like in the coming sessions. Uh, students in the past have traveled throughout Italy um, and also some European countries in the past. Uh, and trips to have included uh, day trips to Florence, uh, weekend trips to Tuscany, or exploring archaeological sites in Sicily with a faculty or staff member, um, as long as well as the classmates that uh, choose to join the trip. So there is an academic component to the trip. You get to see a different part of Italy, a different part of the world, really, um, but also have fun with your classmates along the way and get to learn a little bit about a new type of culture. Classes, uh, gearing, uh, switching gears back to the Rome campus, classes normally run Monday through Thursday. There are some Friday class days throughout the semester. You will be notified um, in advance about them, but usually they make up for a day that perhaps like a holiday would take over, such as uh, Thanksgiving on a Thursday or Easter Monday in the spring. Um, and then lastly, what you can anticipate before your time in Rome is that you, uh, your advisor will be reaching out and helping you plan those courses, um, figuring out which core classes might fit best with your schedule or what your interests are uh, for your time in Rome. And then before you return to the Chicago campus, they'll also work with you to figure out um, what classes you'll be taking when you go back to the States for your sophomore year. Moving on to our student and residence life, we have a beautiful campus located in the Balduina neighborhood on Monte Mario in Rome. So um, some of the highlights, some of the amenities that uh, you can anticipate um, are number one, provided bedding. So you do not have to worry about bringing extra towels, sheets, pillows, pillowcases. That will be provided for you when you arrive on campus. Um, each residence hall room has a private full bathroom that has in-unit air conditioning and heating, as well as Wi-Fi access. There is a storage and wardrobe as well as a mini fridge. It's a very, um, I think, helpful <laughs> added bonus to being a student at the Rome campus is the sheet exchange that they, ever, they have every week. We do have laundry facilities on the campus, but specifically for the linens, there is an exchange, a weekly exchange that students can take their old sheets and then exchange them out for a new pair. That way they don't have to worry about doing that themselves. Your other laundry, though, you do have to do on your own. Um, in addition to those, we have some extra student lounges for studying and social uh, socializing, as well as the library and information commons um, located on campus. It's surrounded by some nice green space. We have a beautiful courtyard with an olive grove that is adjacent as well. So students often partake in our olive harvest every fall. And in addition to that, we have our Mensa and our Ronaldo's Cafe. Mensa is like a cafeteria. It serves lunch and dinner every day that classes are in session and also on the weekends. Uh, the only time that it is not in session would be for those longer breaks. So the fall break, the spring break, Thanksgiving and Easter. 
again, you are notified about these in advance so you can plan otherwise, whether you are staying in Rome or you're traveling elsewhere, you can figure out what you'd like to do in terms of food. But when Mensa isn't open uh, throughout the day and perhaps you want something to eat or you've, you know, you want a snack or a espresso or a cappuccino, you have Ronaldo's Bar, which is also located on campus. The coffee bar or cafe, um, it does serve coffee and pastries in the morning, but it also is great for grabbing a salad, a pizza, a panino um, for when Mensa isn't open. This is included in the meal plan, so there's a 205 euro balance per semester that you are welcome to use to buy snacks uh, throughout your time in Rome. Uh, as an added, um, a note, we do have a virtual tour of the campus uh, located on our website. However, that does not um, include the new additions that we have. So as of spring 2020, we finished construction and opened a brand new residence hall um, that uh, is not actually a part of the campus tour just yet. We are working on updating that, but we are including several pictures just so you have a little bit of a better idea. On the top left corner there, you see the new entrance with a gate um, that'll get you right to the front of campus uh, where our portineria or lobby is located. There you'll find a uh, 24 hour service, uh, whether it's our security guards in the evenings or our um, porter in the mornings and afternoons to help you with any, they're a great information point really. Uh, for our visitors, but also for our students and staff. There you see a photo of night and day throughout the courtyard. And then on the bottom row, you'll see photos of the new and updated and renovated uh, residence halls. So the residence halls that are pictured uh, in the campus tour, they will now be looking some, they will look similar to this. Uh, as you can see, there are the two beds, there's the private full bathroom, as well as a desk and wardrobe for students to use. So um, we're very happy with the new uh, updates to campus and we can't wait for students to um, be able to be the first to use them. And then moving on to our student and residence life. Um, you, uh, similar to Loyola Chicago, uh, you can anticipate there being a very close-knit um, community. And so here at the Rome Center especially, not only do you have an intimate community with your Rome Start cohort, but with the uh, other students that are coming in from LUC and from uh, universities that we partner with. We have our own student portal uh, that has a full calendar of events that are happening in and around campus. It's called LU Community, and then uh, through LU Community, you can RSVP for the different events that the Residence Life staff is putting on, fill out any forms they might need you to do, whether it's for those activities or for the study trips, and read JFRC News to see what's going on in the community. You can expect an invitation to the LU Community Portal right before you arrive on campus. Typ typical programming throughout a semester uh, can include uh, Monte Mario hikes. So one of our staff members is an avid hiker and she takes students around to the natural reserves that are located 10, 15 minutes away from campus that provide some great panoramic views of the city. There are on-campus socials like karaoke nights, open mic nights, um, ping pong table tournaments. You can go to cooking classes, pasta uh, making classes in Prati. Uh, there are Roman mosaic classes. You learn how to make your own, um, as well as uh, several volunteer and service opportunities. So whether they're um, a component of your engaged learning courses or uh, you're doing it as an extracurricular activity, there are ways that you can get involved with the Balduina, our local neighborhood area, or just the Rome metropolitan area where you can um, be a good member of the community, uh, whether it's working in a soup kitchen or uh, volunteering at one of the refugee centers that we might have um, relations with. So you'll never be bored at the Rome Center and there are folks that are there along the way to help you figure out what you're interested in and what you can do with your time there outside of the classroom. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for joining. I hope we found it helpful. If you do have further questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. We know there's a lot going on right now between today and the day you'll set foot on one of our campuses. And so we are here to help. General questions can go to our colleague, Joe Sirdar, who oversees the Rome Star program. His email is listed here, jsirdar at luc.edu. You can also contact both Ola and myself uh, at rome at luc.edu. All three of us are standing by to help in whatever way we can to make sure that your transition from high school to Rome is as smooth as possible. We're very excited to work with you and we're very excited to welcome you to campus on Rome in the fall. Thanks for joining us again. Grazie, ci vediamo a presto e ciao.